Hi everyone, this is Peter here. This is gonna be a kind of follow-up video to my initial testing of the 58 mm close-up lens from Nisi. They sent both of these lenses to me for some testing, but I'm not being paid, so I try to be as unbiased and objective as I can. Today, I'm gonna be testing the 77 mm version on both my Canon 100 mm macro lens along with the 100 to 400 telephoto zoom. I'll be using the Canon ATD, which has an APS-C sensor with a crop factor of 1.6x. While the optical magnification won't be affected, the apparent magnification will be increased due to this crop factor, so just keep that in mind. On the website, they state that at around 200 mm focal length, the magnification ratio should be one to one or close to life-sized reproduction of the subject on the sensor. We'll definitely find that out as I'll be comparing shots taken with the Canon 100mm macro lens, which has a maximum magnification ratio of one to one. Besides how much magnification ratio we can get out of these setups, I've been mainly focusing on the overall image quality. This review is gonna consist of two main parts. In the first one, I'll be taking shots in my studio in a controlled environment, just to gauge and assess the magnification ratios we can achieve with this close-up lens, and also look at how the working and the minimum focusing distances are affected. In the second part of our test, we'll be looking at images that I'll be taking out in the field with both of these setups, then I will finally summarize our findings. So let's get started. So first I'm gonna test how much the magnification ratio is increased. Currently the 100 millimeter macro lens is attached to the ATD and I'm gonna take a picture of this pencil at the maximum magnification ratio of one to one. I've got the image stabilization disabled, just make sure when you're using a tripod that you disable that first. I also got the shutter on 10 second delay because we wanna minimize motion blur. I've got it set to manual focus and I'm gonna be shooting at 1 25th of a second at f14 and at the base ISO of 100. I've already punched in with the magnifying glass and I'm focusing at the tip of the pencil just to make sure it's in perfect focus. All right, there's still some movement. That's why I've got the 10 second delay on. Now the movement stopped and we're gonna take the picture. All right, just double checking. I'm gonna zoom in and it's perfect. Now I'm gonna attach the close-up lens. The adapter ring is already screwed onto the front filter. All right, now that we've got the close-up lens attached, let's see how much closer I need to get to this subject. Uh, about that much. So I have to get a little bit closer. I have to keep pressing the shutter button because the screen goes blank or dark. I just wanna make sure that the focus is perfect. All right, come on. The only other test that I wanted to do is set the focus to infinity and see how much that affects the working distance. As you can see, the working distance has become much longer, considerably longer. Let's take another shot now. I already pre-focused at the tip of the pencil. All right. That's good. I'm just double checking that the focus is fine. In the next part of our test, we're gonna take the same shots, three shots, one at infinity, one at the maximum magnification ratio without the close-up lens attached, which is 0.31x, and then we're gonna have a look at how much that magnification is increased by attaching the close-up lens. Our first shot is gonna be just uh, without the close-up lens. I wanted to show you guys what the working distance and the minimum focusing distance is like. The minimum focusing distance at the maximum magnification ratio of 0.31x is around 98 millimeters. So you can see it's considerably longer than with the macro lens. I'm gonna take just uh, one shot and then we'll be able to compare uh, the other shots when I set the focus to infinity once the close-up lens is attached and also at the minimum focusing distance. So these shots are gonna just help you guys so you can compare and kind of reference shots. Now we're gonna attach the close-up lens. Okay, that's fine. 
Now I've got the close-up lens attached and you can see that the working distance has considerably shortened. The minimum focusing distance, as I said before, was 98 centimeters, so close to a meter. And now it has been reduced at least by 70%, I'd say, and it's around 30 centimeters. So this is gonna be the absolute maximum magnification ratio that you can achieve at the telephoto end of 400 millimeter. I've been using manual flash exposure and because we are much closer to our subject this time, I had to reduce the maximum output to around 50%. So let's take our next test shot. Now I've got the focus set to infinity. And what I've noticed on the back screen that the image is a little bit blurrier. So obviously you would use it at the minimum focusing distance. That's when I'm assuming you're gonna get the sharpest results. But once the images are uploaded, we can confirm that. Let's take a shot now. I've got everything set up and uh, see how we go. Still a little bit of movement. Hopefully it's gonna stop. Just stop right now. After the studio shots the following day, I spent at least a couple of hours taking more images of different subjects around the house with both of these setups. First with the 100 to 400 mm telephoto zoom, then with the 100 mm macro. I was really enjoying working with both, but I must say that even though the working distance is much shorter with the macro lens, it was significantly more difficult to nail the focus at 400 mm focal length with such extremely shallow depth of field but I love a bit of challenge. First, I'll be showing you about a dozen shots taken with the zoom lens, then a compilation of more macros will follow of slightly higher magnification that were captured with the 100 mm macro. Now that we have looked at these shots, we can draw some conclusions. Before that, I'd like to just briefly talk about the kit itself. Let's start with the build quality first. At this price point, which is essentially double that of the 58mm close-up lens, I didn't expect anything less from Nisi other than the high quality construction with the brushed aluminium and the optically excellent glass, and they certainly didn't disappoint. The lens weighs considerably more than the 58mm version. It comes in just under 200 grams. If you're using a smaller camera body, a mirrorless body for example, just keep that in mind that it might become a little bit front heavy, but it wasn't really a big issue for me. The close-up lens came in a nice protective patch, hard case. Not only does it look good, it's also very functional, provides the lens with an extra protection besides the two snap-on plastic caps. It also came with two adapter rings, a 67 and a 72 millimeter step-down ring. When you use one of these adapter rings, just make sure that you don't screw them on too tight onto the filter thread of the primary lens because they can get stuck and removing them can be 
a bit of a struggle. All right, let's talk about the most important thing, the overall image quality. Just like with the 58 millimeter lens, the sharpness was exceptional and the color reproduction was superb as well. Due to the special epochromatic design, the color fringing was essentially non-existent. I usually enable profile corrections in Lightroom, so that should take care of it with a single click anyway. Now we should summarize our findings about the level of magnification we get out of these setups. With the Canon 100mm lens, the magnification was increased from 1x by approximately 35% at least. When I looked at the images from side to side in Photoshop, the picture on the right side was taken at 1 to 1 magnification, and if I zoom in by 35% it pretty much matches the shot I got with the close-up lens that's still a decent amount of increase in magnification. With the telephoto zoom the maximum magnification ratio was increased from 0.31x all the way up to around 1x which you can see here. In the second side-to-side -side comparison the image on the right was taken with the Canon 100mm macro lens at 1 to 1 and the shot on the left pretty much matches the ratio so we can happily confirm that Nisi's claim was accurate. The working distance, which is the distance of the subject from the front element of the lens, was considerably shortened, but still long enough to capture difficult subjects such as skittish insects. I also like the fact that you can use this close-up lens when the focus is set to infinity. It just gives you plenty of flexibility when you don't want to shoot at the highest magnification ratio possible. Once again, just like with the 58mm lens, I'm really happy with the product and I can highly recommend it. I wish it was slightly cheaper, but then again, you get what you pay for. If you have a telephoto zoom lens or standard zoom, lens and you want to convert them into a macro lens then this is definitely a great option. These close-up lenses are much more flexible to use in my opinion than for example extension tubes. They provide you with more magnification and they are quite easy to use in the field. If you already own a dedicated macro lens such as the 100mm macro from Canon then you can further increase its magnification quite significantly as well. Anyway I should wrap this up now. I hope you find this review useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the content. You also might want to check out my review of the 58mm lens I captured some really cool subjects in that one. Thanks again for watching and see you all very soon in the next one.